I don't know what you want from me. That was the answer to the video. Bonsoir tout le monde, bienvenue dans YouTube channel moi. Um, <laughs> I tried, I tried something new, you know, because today's topic, today's topic involves me, what we do when we lay down. But anyways, bienvenue dans YouTube channel moi tout le monde. Um, if this is if this is your first time here, hello, I am Blair of Shadow of Gondra, CEO and founder of Shadow of Gondra. We we'll bring you authentic voodoo, of authentic Haitian voodoo. And um, and the traditional magics of Southern Italy, Stregania. If any of that interests you, or if anything you've seen thus far has made you chuckle or anything, um, or piqued your interest, you know, stay tuned, subscribe. Um, but if it's not your first time here and you are coming back to see me, hello, welcome back. My hair is a fucking mess. Ugh. Um, so today we're gonna be discussing. Um, we're going to be discussing cold weather, because it's cold. No, really. Um, we're going to be discussing dreams. Um, the, the importance of dreams in, in spirituality and in witchcraft. And really the whole, how much can dreams be, be trusted? Because I, I hear all the time being, people being like, I saw a woman in a yellow dress in my dream. It must mean I am the child of Oshun. Or, oh my god, Oshun wants to talk with me. That means Oshun is with me. Or, oh my god, I saw a fucking bunny rabbit. That must mean this. That must mean seeing this in my dream. Oh my god, in my dreams, all my teeth are going to fall out, meaning that I... Oh my god, there's gonna be something bad happening. <laughs> that was a lot. That was a lot. That was a lot. But then again, I'm a lot. Anyways. Um, so, today we're gonna to be discussing dreams. Um, and, you know, how valid are they? So, what are dreams so scientifically dreams are kind of the brain's ability to process what has happened throughout the day um or throughout you know what deal with actually traumas um you know in dreams you actually can't um in, in dreams you can remember things that you experience throughout the day. Oftentimes, if you are thinking about something the entire day, it's gonna be showing up in your dreams. Um, the other funny thing though, is that we, the brain can't actually remember how things taste, but in dreams we can. So that's very interesting. Dreams are also found in many different parts of the brain. And we only dream when we're in REM sleep, which is the deepest part of uh, which is the deepest part of sleep that we can get into where literally REM means rapid eye movement where literally our eyes the entire time are like this while we're sleeping um and so like that's why that's often why when people when you look at someone in REM sleep you're like what the f why are their eyes moving what the f this looks so weird um but this is mainly because they're actually dreaming they're they're their brain is processing things. And the reason why we often don't remember our dreams or we say we don't dream is because of a lot of things. Of a lot of things, really. Um, dreams can be hard to remember because sometimes they mean nothing. Or if they're a nightmare, you don't want to remember those dreams. But oftentimes when you become a very spiritual person, when you become a very spiritual person, you start remembering your dreams. You start remembering your dreams a lot. And actually, dream reading is something that's very important when it comes to spirituality and witchcraft. Um, hold on, pause. I need to put up my hair. Okay, we're back. Um, so, um, here's the thing about dreams. So, in 
Um, in many, in many uh, practices and religions, we believe that when we dream, we actually leave our bodies. Now there is this thing called astral projection, which, you know, takes a lot of practice to be able to do because basically what astral projection is you, your astral form or quite literally your soul leaves your body and goes to the spirit realm or the astral realm and you travel and you can witness things and see things and you can see your and you can see your body you know astral projection is something that we can all do to a certain extent but it takes a lot of practice to really be able to hone the skill and um you know master and know when you're astral projecting because in reality if you practice and are very good at it and are innately gifted with the gift of astral projection you can astral project while you're awake, which is kind of fun, kind of interesting. Hi, editing Blair, just jumping right in. Um, I forgot to mention how dangerous astral projection can be as well, because you know if you're not trained and if you don't know what you're doing and if it's not like an innate gift, astral projection can actually be very dangerous for like first time doers and things like that, because you know you're physically leaving your body. You know, you're leaving yourself up to, like, things coming in, to, like, things attacking you and things like that. But also, like, you're, like, there's a possibility you could become a lost soul. Because a lot of what lost souls are, are people who astral projected and people who left their body and weren't able to come back. You know, the whole mo the whole series of Insidious is a real fucking concept, actually, where there are people call travelers people who can who can innately do those type of things and can go into the spirit world and have a hard time coming back and when they have a hard time coming back it can leave them vulnerable and put them in a dangerous situation so um yeah so spiritually wise what is happening when we dream so i can tell you from a voodoo stance um so within us, there is the Thibonage and the Guobanage. Um, that is the, the little, the little angel and the big angel. Um, well, the little good angel and the big good angel. So with what's happening there is basically like, that's kind of like the difference between like the head spirit and the body spirit. Cause like one contains the personality, like the soul, the entire being of the person while the other one contains just like the body movement, the actual thing. Um, but with that whole conversation goes into a whole other conversation that I'm not going to be discussing in this video. Um, but when we dream, the Tibanaj leaves the body and then literally goes to Gene, goes to the spirit world where we interact with our spirits and our spirits are able to communicate with us and we're able to learn things from them. Because oftentimes when I am dreaming, nowadays especially, I'm remembering my dreams because I am lucid dreaming. Uh, something that I've learned how to do a lot as I've gotten deeper into my practice is lucid dream. Because as much as we start dreaming and we're like, we're like going throughout things, we start realizing, well, this doesn't, this feels different. This is feeling different. Oh, wait a minute. I'm in a dream. Oh my God, this is a dream. And then you can start influencing the world around you. But the funny thing is that when you when you then lucid dream, you're able to not only control the world around you, you're also able to fully remember and conversate with your spirits. Um, you're able to be taught things better because while in the beginning of my journey, I was taught things and my spirits would speak with me, I wasn't able to properly understand what they were saying to me. So like, for instance, um, two years, three years ago, before I was ever like getting really good at, at lucid dreaming, um, Azili Fedda came to me in my dream and she was basically trying to teach me a bath, a bath for, uh, love because I was struggling with love in that moment. And I was praying to her being like, I, can you teach me something? Can you teach me something? Can you teach me something? And she was showing me the things and I can still recall the dream, but the thing was that in that dream, she was speaking to me in French. And at the time I didn't understand French. 
And so I was like, I don't understand you. I don't know what you're saying. And so she stopped talking, just showing me things like, well, it, the little the dream was in my room and she was like pointing at my, my herbs. I mean, actually I'm not gonna show you. Um, she, she was pointing at my, my shelf of herbs being like this, 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 and then kind of showing me a vision of the other things I needed to get. And then I'd be like, okay. And then I woke up, I kind of forgot a couple of things. I was like, oh, um, I guess I'll use what I remember. Um, and it still worked, <laughs> but, um, continuing on, uh, as I started lucid dreaming, the funny thing is that in my dreams, my spirits are speaking their, their native tongue. Like Danto is still speaking with the ke 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 is still speaking with, um, speaking with one word between the ke 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 If Tijin is with her, or if, if Makaya is with her, or if, or if Lekpa is with her, or if, if, if Ogu is with her, they will translate for me, but they will be speaking Creole. And while I speak Creole proficiently now, I'm not completely fluent, but you know, I can hold a conversation. Um, I can understand them as if I'm fluent within my dream because my Tibanaj is able to fully, because my Tibanaj is, is fed, strengthened, and I, I keep it healthy. Um, it's able to connect to their frequency almost because even though they're higher vibrational beings, um, and I, and we as humans are, are like middle tier vibrational beings, the Thibonaj is able to somewhat in tune itself back into that frequency and understand what they're saying. Because, you know, Lekba can speak English because Lekba can speak every language. Um, so if Lekba was there, I don't need to be able to tune into them. But if Lekba was not there and it's just Ogu and, and Danto and Kafu and, and the Gede and everything like that, I am somehow able to remember what they're saying. Because when I wake up, I'm like, oh, they said this. They, they were saying this to me. They want to communicate this with me. Um, but if I have to repeat what they said to me back, I'm like, uh that's going to be difficult for me. Um, but, um, then the dreams also turn into not only just some spirit is communicating directly to me, they're showing me visions. So recently about a couple months ago, I had a dream about, um, one of my good Bougon friends, um, and his house and his, uh, and his, um, mambo and other things like that. And I was actually like, oh, I need to contact him. I need to definitely contact him and get a reading done. And I did, and that reading was, oh my God, so important for me. Um, very, very important for me. Um, and so that right there was automatically, I knew that spirit was speaking to me being like, hey, this specific person, go get a reading from them, uh, go speak to them, because we need to speak to you we need to speak with you and communicate with you properly, not just with dreams, not just with prayer. We need to speak with you. So I, I did. I got the reading, got the messages I needed, I needed and boom. Um, but um, here's where the trickiness lies. <sighs> now again, when I first was in the liberal, when I first was in the religion, first getting into everything, when I first was getting into spirituality in general, when I saw things in my dreams, I was like, oh, this is weird. Oh, this is weird. I don't know what this is meaning. But, and so that I would speak to a priest and they would then explain things to me. And still to this day, I don't take everything that I see in a dream to truth. If I see a woman in yellow in a river dancing, I am not going to automatically think Anaisa Pia. I'm not going to auto automatically think Oshun. I'm not going to automatically think Mama Chola because mo a lot of people think, oh my God, I'm seeing these spirits. Oh my God, I, I saw a woman in yellow in a river. Do you know how many spirits exist that are women in yellow and are associated with rivers? Do you know how many? 
there also comes that that tricky thing when with crossroad spirits. So you might be going to the crossroads thinking you're giving an offering to Papa Lekba or Kafu when you're really giving an offering to a trickster spirit, a troll, an elf, a fae. Because all those spirits live at the crossroads. Here's the because okay, dreams are not meant to be taken word for word, literally to literally. Oftentimes. Unless it's unless you are highly trained, unless you are initiated, unless you know what to look out for, unless you know for a motherfucking fact that you are in the right space, know exactly what to be looking out for, and you know and are able to receive spiritual messages through your dreams directly like that, you shouldn't be taking dreams. You shouldn't be taking dreams for face value. Um, because it can get, it causes issues. Because oftentimes, especially with like Santeria and Ocha and Lukomi and the Orishas and Ifa, I see all the time people being like, I saw this person in my dream. I saw this person in my dream. Oh my God, this was them in my dream. They were in my dream. They were in my dream. That must mean I must be their child. So I don't need to go get a reading. Literally, I know people. I know a couple people who are like, I saw Oshun in my dream. I'm a daughter of Oshun. But then when they go get the reading, they're Ogun, Obatala, Shango, Oya. Not, not Oshun. <laughs> um, and you know, when I was interacting with Santeria, I was having visions of Alegua, but I didn't think automatically, ooh, I have Alegua with me. Ooh, Alegua wants to speak with me. Yes, I had the feeling that it was Alegua, but no, when I, I then spoke to a priest and they confirmed that it was Alegua, but I knew because of my training that a, a man in black and red and white associated with the crossroads and cowrie shells I don't know that could be that could be a couple spirits that could be a couple spirits because that could be a couple spirits in voodoo that could be a couple spirits in a lot of African practices you know Anansi um, that could possibly actually be Shango that could, uh, yeah, Alegua, but it could be also Kafu. It could be Lekba. It could be a, it could be a multitude of spirits. So when you are have a feeling that a spirit is with you due to your dreams, um, go speak, go speak to a go speak to a priest. Write down what you saw in your dreams. Go speak to a priest, and then get a reading. And if it comes up in the reading that is in fact that spirit, okay, boom. Continue forward with that. Learn how to how to work with them. Learn how to serve them. Um, or if they just have a message, learn what that message is. Take that in. But don't automatically take these dreams for, you know, plain, val plain value. Another thing I wanted to speak on was this thing that I've kind of discovered that I can do a lot recently. Um, and I spoke about it in uh, one of my early video, uh, in videos a couple uh, um a couple weeks ago was that um, I developed this ability a lucid dreaming to the point that it's kind of unhealthy so what I mean by that is that quite literally what has happened is that I will be I will have my normal amount of sleep and this will usually be on a day where I have nothing going on you know it's a day off um, and I, and I don't want to get out of bed or, or, you know, depression <laughs> and you know, I will, um, I will check my, I will wake up, check my phone, get a drink of water. And it's not even like I'm tired. It's just that I'm kind of just out of it. So I just close my eyes again. And the funny thing is that I'm not, and then I keep doing this for long enough that I'm not necessarily sleeping, but I'm dreaming. 
because, and I knew I was doing this because I was having a normal dream. And then I hear my mom knock on my door and come in and me and her are having a full conversation while I'm laying down. And the funny thing is, I'm still in my dream. While we're having a full on conversation, I'm still in my dream, fully conscious of what is going on around me, but I'm still in my dream. I'm still in the spirit world and I'm exploring things, learning things, but it's not like lucid dreaming. I want to say it's like lucid dreaming because that's the only thing I can compare it to, but quite literally, I'm literally closing my eyes and I'm not necessarily sleeping because I'm still fucking conscious. I'm not necessarily sleeping because I'm having a full on conversation with my mother that I still remember what the full conversation was about, but I'm literally in the middle of a hallway, walking through a house, and, I, and I'm hearing birds around me. I'm seeing water on my feet. Explain what that is to me. Because I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is. And literally, what I, and literally it's like when I come out of it, it's not like I'm waking up. Yes, it's, a, it's kind of like that feeling of after an intense dream where you literally feel like your soul is coming back into your body. But when I wake up, it's not like I got any rest. I just continued forward. I just used energy. I know I can still do it. Like I, I can do it whenever I want really. Like literally I can be, I can be laying down right now and while I'm sleepy, as you can see, because I'm yawning. <laughs> if I'm sleeping, but I fall asleep. But then when I wake up tomorrow morning and I want to close my eyes again, I'm not necessarily going to go back to sleep because if I get the proper amount of sleep, I'm not going to go back to sleep, but I'm, but I'm literally in tune and conscious while I'm doing everything. And then suddenly I start dreaming again and I guess having visions, but you know, if someone comes into my room, I can have a full conversation with them and remember everything that I'm saying with them, saying to them. And you know, the funny, the funny thing is that, um, this only started happening after I took my seven day bath. This only started happening after I, after I took my seven day bath, the one that my spirits that I needed to start, I needed to take after I did my floor wash. I wonder why now, why they wanted me to do it. Because it, I think it unlocked something where now I can kind of dream on command. I don't know. All I know is that I'm being careful. <laughs> I definitely did a lot and taking a lot of precautions now. Like whenever, uh, once a week I will blow cascaria on my bed. I will throw some Florida water on my pillows. I have a, I have a, um, let me see if I can get it out. I have a satchel of salt, um, of a satchel of salt in my pillow because I'm um, keeping those muertos away from me because they don't like salt. Um, but yeah, um, it's definitely interesting. It's definitely interesting to say the least because You kind of, you don't really know what's going on in your dreams, but at the same time you do. And dreams are very important in the spirituality. And while they can teach us things and they, while they can show us things, you need to take them with a grain of salt until you know how to read your dreams. So, uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it for today. Um, as always... If you enjoyed today's video, if you enjoyed the discussion that we're having, 
uh, please give the video a like, a comment. Comment down below. How, what, what's, what's your experience like with dreaming? What, have you have you ever lucid dreamed? Tell me, have you ever had the experience that I had where you can dream while being conscious? Um, and I don't know, but let me know. Let me know. Um, and yeah, if you enjoyed today's video, again, like, comment, subscribe. Um, you know, join the family, come on. You know, what, 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 harm, what harm is it gonna do for you, okay? Um, and I hope you all are staying healthy, staying warm out there because, you know, we're, we're getting another storm, we're going to be getting another snowstorm, um, here in New York, so stay, stay safe, y'all, okay? Um, and yeah, that's going to be it for me tonight, y'all, okay? Au revoir.